So this is an Adirondack chair that we purchased several years ago from Harbor Freight, of all places, for like $30, $40 a piece. It's been repainted several times. It's gotten a lot of wear. It's been totally exposed to the elements the whole time. Never been inside. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this chair and we're going to basically deconstruct it and rebuild a new chair using the same dimensions. The Adirondack chair is a great chair uh, designed in the 19th century in Westport, New York. It's probably the most comfortable piece of outdoor furniture, durable piece, a simple design. And um, so let's get started. So I've got the pieces I need disassembled. This, these two chairs basically are a duplicate of each side. So what I'm going to do is clean up these pieces I've taken off as a template. I'm going to mark some lumber and next step we're going to uh, start cutting out our lumber. The one that I noticed when I pulled this apart was the screws. This is basically assembled with drywall screws or something very similar. Drywall screws, while they're cheap, are not good for construction of furniture. They're very brittle. They also, if you're going to be outside in the elements, they don't take um, uh, moisture very well. They stain, they brittle, they get cra uh, they, they, they crack. Um, don't use drywall screws. There's much better fasteners, uh, GRK fasteners or torque fasteners uh, that are much better. Um, just, yeah, drywall screws aren't good. So I've got my various pieces here that are kind of unique and need to be kind of special cut. Kind of cleaned up, took all the old fasteners out, a lot of rot on these. And this will be a template for the new chair. So when you build something like this, you got to get lumber. Um, what I'm using here, I've got several pieces here in the shop of uh, one by six. And this is uh, basically a, a pine product from Sweden. Uh, basically, it's fairly clear, got a little bit of knots in it. And what you want to do when you buy your lumber, typically I have lumber and wood uh, around the shop. But I did go ahead and pick up a few pieces for this. So you want to take your really big pieces like this leg runner, like the arm, and lay it out on your piece of wood. I carry two pencils, a wide pencil and narrow pencil. I kind of take a wide pencil, mark it. Mark the big cuts for all your pieces. When you build something with wood, your first step is of course the plan and design and so forth. Next is to make your rough cuts and that is cut your large pieces of lumber rather it be sheet goods like plywood or um, dimensional lumber like this. Cut it down to the basic length you need it and then take all your lumber and put everything out and cut everything down all at one time. Now what I've done I made a mark here on how long that particular leg runner is and I've written leg runner one. So I'll mark all these out in other words, always cut your big pieces first. That's a better use of your lumber. The small pieces, you'll have off cuts here at the end of 15, 20 inches that you can use for the smaller pieces. Always cut your big pieces first. And when you plan on your lumber, as soon as you get your lumber home and you start building, mark it all out, make sure you have enough. And if you don't have enough, go back and get some more. Uh, you know, Don't wait till the end. I hate it when I'm building a project and I realized halfway through I don't have enough fasteners or I don't have enough uh, finished materials or enough actual product itself. 
So again, what you want to do is take this, mark it out, most wise use of your lumber, mark out all your pieces, then the next step will be we'll go to the, the compound miter saw and just make rough cuts on all this. So here's a good tip when laying out and doing um, wood layout for a furniture project. Make yourself up a list of all the parts you need. This is a simple list here where I have each one of the parts listed. And I've got the dimensions and I've got a little B circle over here meaning I'm going to need to go to the bandsaw and do some cutting some curves and some tapers and so forth. So I've got a list here. I'm going to find, like I said earlier, we've already cut out our arms and legs or the leg runners. Now I'm going to find my largest piece and lay it out on, a, on my wood here. But here's the thing. A lot of folks new in woodworking will take their tape measure and let's say this first piece is 24 inches long. Okay, there's my first one. Oh, I need two of them. So let me go to here at 48. There you go, there's my two pieces. First piece, second piece. If you do that, you're gonna have a big mistake. And here's why, what you haven't taken into account for is the width of your saw blade. You've got a thin curved saw that might be a 16th of an inch up to 3 8 of an inch. So when you lay out a, a part that's 24 pieces and you wanna to go to the next piece that's 24 inches long, you can go to the other end of your board and bring it down this way or simply account for your the width of your saw blade. So I'm gonna go 24, let's say, and then I'm gonna add a quarter of an inch and then measure 24. That gives me a little bit of slack in there in case, uh, in case I mismeasured, but mostly gives me a little bit of slack because I'm now taking into account my width of my saw blade plus an eighth or sixteenth of an inch. That way I've got a little bit of extra wood. It's always better to be too long than to be too short because if you're too short well then you're kind of you're kind of messed up in that particular task so like i said in the previous segment i've laid out every part of the uh, adirondack chair every part of the build on my lumber i got about i think about uh six pieces of one by six stock that i'm using for this so i see here for example front leg one front leg two uh, the rear leg, one, two, three, and four, and all the other pieces as well. So before I start sawing anything, I've got my layout here. I've got a little bit of extra space in here for the width of the saw blade. You know, eighth inch either way, so I'm not wasting, wasting lumber. Um, the next step, now we've got all this laid out, is to start doing our rough cut down to the length and width. On that, I'll probably use primarily the table saw. The compound miter saw, my compound miter saw, I cannot stand it. Uh, it's not very accurate. I've had it for about 10 years now. Um, it's, it's just kind of getting to the end of its life. Uh, motor has some problems with it, so I like my table saw much better. Plus, the table saw gives me a better cut. I'll cut most of this at the table saw, and of course, some of this I'll need to cut at the band saw in order to get some of the decorative touches and some of the curves and so forth. So I'm going to clean up this old, this old stuff that's here and get started getting the table saw set up and we'll go over there and start cutting this uh, these pieces down.
Okay, so I'm going to cover. What we're going to do next is cut our pieces down to the correct length. But I see a mistake that people make on a table saw that is really, really dangerous. And let me cover this with you. I see folks take a thin piece of stock. This is about 30 inches long, and they want to cut it down, let's say, to 12 inches. So they'll set their fence for 12 inches, and then they'll grab it, and they'll just try to jam right through it. The problem with that is as this blade is coming through here, it's pushing that wood slightly. You're trying to keep it up the fence. You're trying to keep it up against here. Also, your hands are pretty close to the blade at this point. And what happens is that has a tendency of kicking back on you. The other bad thing about it is, let's say, if I did get that piece of wood through the blade, and now I'm up to here trying to work it through, just look at what's going on here. That, that ha especially a thin piece of stock, I'm having to work it through here and now through the back side of the blade. Again, I'm leaning over my blade and that thing can jam in there pretty easily. It's a tight fit. There's not a lot of stock here to keep things running in place along the fence. So, the safe way of doing this is to put the board down, go up here and find the front edge of your board, and then take a piece of stock that you know the depthness or the thickness of. This is exactly one inch mahogany. I'm gonna put it right about here. Add a couple of clamps to hold it in place up against my fence. And now all I gotta do is just add one inch to my fence because this is one inch of stock. And as I go through here and cut this, as it goes through the blade, as long as I have control here, there's free movement over here. And that board cannot kick back on me if I keep it smooth and smooth and even. So now let's start cutting these pieces down to, down to size. Okay, so it's time to now put it all together. We've cut all the pieces on the table saw and the band saw. And like for example, here are the back, some back slats. All the wood is right here to put the whole piece together. I found that when you build a project and you first start off with your design, rough cut your lumber, then you shape and fine cut your lumber, uh, your wood, and then basically from there you start the assembly, get organized. There's nothing worse than having to walk around trying to find that tool you sat down I wear an apron, and I like this apron because it's a thin kind of denim apron. I'm in South Texas. It's about 95 degrees outside right now. It's kind of warm in here. And uh, I like an apron with big pockets because that way I can have everything I need on me versus having to run all over the workbenches and figure out where I set down that tool. Nothing more frustrating than when you need that particular tool and you can't find it. So clean up your area. And here's what we're using as far as uh, tools for this, for this assembly. Of course, I always have a tape measure. I have a small uh, combination square. I have a framing square, a couple of uh, pencils, uh, various uh, small bits, and these are the fasteners we'll be using. Also, a couple of uh, small drill bits to drill out uh, some, some pilot holes to pre-drill some holes. A drill and also an impact driver and a couple of clamps. Some... Now, let me talk about screws for a second. What I'm using for this build are... Um, GRK fasteners. I love these fasteners. One, these are rated for outdoor use or indoor. There's all different types. They have a special bit you use to drive them in. And they're durable, they're a little bit flexible, great holding power. You can buy them for hardwoods or for plywood and softwoods, depending on the thread here. Uh, this is one and a quarter inch, and I've got one and a half inch and one inch, depending on what piece of wood I'm fasten them together. So we'll be using these. It makes a difference to get a good quality fastener when you're putting something together, when you're assembling furniture. Now again, this is an outdoor piece. It's not to the level of fine furniture, meaning that um, the, the, the finished coat and the sanding, 
There's not a whole lot of uh, joinery on this. It's basically bolted and screwed together. And um, it's going to be either painted or it might be stained and finished with some polyurethane. I'll talk about that here at the end. So here I've got a piece of board laid out. I've got some markings on here, some measurements, so I know exactly how far things should be offset. And again, this is a pattern from the old beat-up chair that we took apart. So to start off with, I'm going to get my main pieces I need. I don't need the arms just yet. Set these aside back over here. I do need the, a base runner, the leg runner, one of those, okay? And I need a, a front leg and one of the rear legs, which is very beneath here. Okay, these are my th three pieces I'm putting together right now. Now, I've got it marked out I got some tick marks here where things need to be. I know that this is going to go on top and this is going to go underneath. Things need to be true and square when you're building a piece of furniture or doing any kind of woodworking. So first all I'm going to do, I'm going to set this here. I'll put this piece on top, find my edge there, and I've got it marked where it needs to be. What I do know is that I need to be about two inches from the front. So make, put a small pencil mark there. Take my front leg. And from the bottom of the leg to where it meets this side runner, needs to be 13 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go 13 and a quarter inches. And make a little pencil mark on two sides. So I have a reference point. Now all I gotta do is find that point two inches back, 13 and a quarter inches from the, make that mark a little bit brighter. Go to my front and that's about right there is where they intersect. Making sure the back of my leg is flush to the build jig I have here. A little bit further down, keeping those two points marked up where they should be. And there we go. Now taking my pencil, I wanna make one little line here, a line here. Now I'm going to take my rear leg, I know it goes at this angle here, put it back here in the back. And I've got it pre-marked here where it needs to be on the back side, a couple of small pencil marks. And this has to be 27 and an eighth inch from the floor up to the, the top right here. So take my tape measure, go down here to the end, and go up to 27 and an eighth. And that's about right there, okay? Now I gotta make sure that my chair is square. So taking a, a small framing square, I'm gonna put that beneath here. and then turn this to a square. Bring my leg back down, okay. So I'm right there. I'm gonna measure it again to make sure because I didn't move some wood around here. And move this up slightly to about right, to about right there, that's 27 and an eighth. And I'm square right there, okay. Let me move this forward slightly right there, okay, all right. So now that I've got that marked on that side, I'll mark it over on this side here as well and put a reference line right there so I know exactly where I should be. The next step on this now is to drill four holes through this to accept
these galvanized carriage bolts. These are quarter inch by two. My wood thickness is one and a half inches, so I have half an inch through here to put my nut and my washer on. This provides a lot of the strength of the chair. I can't just put some wood screws in there because remember, this is a chair. Folks gonna, be, folks gonna be sitting in it, rocking back and forth. Might be some big old folks sitting in it. Uh, I gotta basically um, have a good mechanical fastener here to keep that rigid and keep it strong, okay? So, I'm gonna take my, my front piece here mark where I want those two bolts to go and I go inch in, inch and a half and centered and the same thing back here. Here and here. Now, the issue is I don't want to drill into my bench so put my bit in here. I'm going to drill through the top piece of wood and then just a little bit into the under piece and then take it apart and complete the hole. I can feel that it's through there. Okay, now it's shifted a little bit on me, so I need to take my, my square and make sure that I'm still square here. See, the whole thing kind of moved on me, didn't it? my mark. Ah, that's wanting to move on me. Okay, hold that down real well. Okay, on the back one here, check my marks. Hold it down real well there. And then complete the hole. I'll also get these holes a little bit greened out a little bit so they okay. Now should be able to just I tell you, hopefully you've got a good local hardware store that sells fasteners. That makes sense. What I mean by that is I hate going to the big box stores to buy fasteners because one, it's just difficult to, to get what you need sometimes. And second of all, everything's kind of mismarked it seems. My favorite place close to where I live to buy fasteners like this is Tractor Supply. I tell you why. Um, they sell things by the pound, like an old-fashioned hardware store, okay? Um, this right here goes on the front side like that. I mean, you can buy uh, a pound of galvanized fasteners for like, I think, $5.49. So it's a great place to go stock up on the fasteners you need. Come on, get through there. There we go. Now I'm not tightening these all the way down yet. I'm just gonna make them finger tight. Good idea when you're building something like this. Don't torque it all the way down just yet. Take my extra screws and washers and, and again, point to stay organized. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit like an Adirondack chair. I'm gonna do this now to the other side, so I have two sides, and then I'll show you how we start putting the center of the chair together. 
Okay, now the sides are put together. I put together both sides are off to the side. Now I've got my slats, my bottom slats. And what I want to do is I want to pre-drill holes in the end of these so I can put the fasteners that will go into the leg runners. You always, when you're getting down to the end of a piece of wood, you always want to pre-drill, regardless of what quality of fastener you have, and I'll tell you why. If I tried to run one of these fasteners, I'm going almost three, three eighths of an inch from the end to run that. If I go in right there and just drill that, the amount of fastener there is, the width of it, going into that, that end grain of wood, probably crack it. And this right here is quarter sawn, so it might not, but let me take another piece of wood here. Um, if I take like a flat sawn piece of wood, like maybe this one right here, I go to drive a fastener into that, that's going to split open. And the way you minimize wood from splitting is to pre-drill. So one thing you want to do when you pre-drill is I know this is going to be mounted into a piece of stock that's just this wide. So I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to make a, little, a thin little line right here so I know how wide the piece of stock is I'm going to drill into and fasten. So I'm going to take, i got to do two holes on each side of these six slats plus the front, front slat. So I'm going to line them up like this. Get them all fairly even. Take a, another piece of wood, lay across the front, just to give me a reference line. Then I'm going to take my uh, small pencil and just make a thin little line. Not very heavy at all, just so you can see it. And the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. And this is a good time saver. And now I'm going to take a small bit. This is a, uh, I think, a 2 16 uh, 1 8 inch bit. I'm going to drill two small holes in each one of these to accept my fasteners. So we pre-drilled our slats. I've also went ahead and put the fasteners slightly into the slat to save a little bit of time. And here's another time saver. It makes the job easier. Is that you're going to have to take these slats and hold it in place. Get it flush. Hold it. Screw it in. To make it a little easier, pre-drive your fasteners in slightly. One less thing you have to worry about getting the fastener started. Plus, you won't lose them. Nothing worse than trying to get a fastener started when you're using both hands to hold a piece of wood in place. And like I said, most of us only have two hands, so some of y'all might have a third one. I don't know. If you do have a third hand, that makes you awful handy. That's a joke my grandkids would like. Okay. We'll put this one in first. And it's simple. I've already pre-measured, pre-cut. So all I gotta do here is what's kind of dirty right here too. Just go flush out here to the end, flush up against the back, drive in one screw, and we're done. Impact driver works great for this. Now, on the next one, we're going to put the one up here in the very front. I'll tell you why here in a minute. Get that nice and flush where you want it. A little hard to get in right here. Okay, now. I've got five remaining slats to go in here. And here's the nice thing about this chair design. I got my end piece in my vise here, so it's being held securely. I can set these in here. I can measure, or honestly, I can just kind of eyeball it to what looks right. This is a curved piece, so you're not gonna get a great measurement. So I'm gonna go in here and look at about maybe 3 eighths of an inch spacing and see how that looks. Okay, so here, I'm gonna go right about there. And again, if you're building your own chair, you can basically um, make the slats wider, more narrower, whatever's comfortable for you. I'm going to get even spacing. 
I'm going to take my pencil and make a little mark on the end so I know where I am. Because I do have a curve, it's going to look unevenly spaced naturally. So I don't want that one right about there. That one right about there. Right about there. Let's see, that one right about there. And then my last one right about there. Okay, it's important here, do not install this one. And the reason I've got to install my back slats, I have to have room to screw that in. So I'm going to go to this one. Again, go to nice and level with the end, nice and flush. Take the next one. Take a piece of wood underneath here to kind of help support that, makes it a little easier. the equal space in the park. Take my next one, same thing, take a piece of wood here. Ah, come on. Let's go right about there. fits right in there. Make sure it's good and even. Okay. okay. Now that takes care of those. Put my uh Okay, so I've got one side, this side is fastened, this side really isn't. I screwed in this one plate here. I took a, a large wood clamp to go across here to kind of hold things in place as I screw these remaining fasteners. So I'm gonna give us a little bit of torque just to kind of hold it in place and then line up each board, make sure it's flush and where I want it to be. Then I'm gonna drive in the remaining slats. That right about there, that's perfect. Line that one up. And then that one. Okay. Take off my clamp. And now the next thing is to, is to put the back top brace on and then add the slats and then finally the arms. Okay, so that's screwed in place. If you look up here, I've already pre-marked where each slat should go off my template from the old chair. I've also got similar markings down here. So here are my slats here. My next step is gonna be, i take the center slat, and I need to find basically the mark, if I go one, two, three, four, right here, over, get that centered, and then draw a line here in the back so I know where to pre-drill my holes. Since, since each slat is of a different length. I need to get it centered, draw a small line up top, and 
do that for each one of them, keeping them in order. So there's one, two, three, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's my center one there. So go to the next one. And the same thing, find my center portion and draw a small line on the back so I know where to reach real. So I'll do that for all seven. Okay, so I've pre-drilled, I've pre-drilled my fasteners, and I've changed fasteners to another GRK product. This is a small one and a quarter inch fastener, and it's designed for cabinetry. As you can see, the head is much smaller, and what's nice about this fastener here, as it drives in, that head will countersink into the wood, and the way the head's designed has a great amount of holding power. Um, again, and this wood will also expand and contract, it's going to be outside, and this fastener with that head being submerged into the wood, that wood will grab around that and give a great, a great grip. So we'll start off with the first one here. Go flush to the bottom, find my center point up top. Start this one first. Hold on, I gotta change bits. This takes a little bit smaller torque bit here. So I'll go here and find my mark. Start it up here. And then go down here, line it up. And you can see when this fastener goes, it counter sinks down and has a great grab to it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Again, find my mark. Up top as well. Right about there. Hold that in place. Get started there. Make sure I'm flush at the bottom in the right place here. And then work all the way across doing that. So there you go, it's all put in place. Now, I gotta add the center piece here, the remaining slat, which will go right there. And then also on the front, I have to add the front brace, which goes across here to give it stability. And then we'll do the arms. Now attaching the arms, Already cut, ready to go. And I've measured from the, my front leg here, which is 20 and 9 16 transfer the measurement back here, and put a small mark on where the bottom of the arm should go as a reference point. Make sure it's flush. And then I've already pre-drilled a couple of holes. I've got my fasteners ready. I'm gonna drive two fasteners. Right there, and we're going right and do the same on the other side. Line up my mark nice and flush how I want it. That's perfect. Okay, now here's the issue with the arms. You gotta have a support. Gotta have a support beneath the arm here. If not, when you set on this, or people put pressure on it, and inevitably somebody's gonna set on the arm of the chair, there's not much strength there. That'll, that'll break those screws right out. So to fix that, I'm gonna put a support right beneath here. And how the support is going to be fixed. I don't want any screws in the top of this because one, it's going to ruin the look, and two, that's going to be more susceptible to wear and so forth. So I've drilled two pocket holes, just a couple of one inch pocket screws, and then screw from the inside of the arm here into that. 
So let's do that. Okay, so I've inset about an inch here. Here's my piece that I cut. And there's a pocket side on the back side. I'm going to go up here. I've got a line one inch in. I pre-drilled. I'm going to kind of put this into place. Hold it in place with my clamp for a second. Make sure it's flush up top here. And that is. Make sure I'm, I'm on my line. And then with my fasteners. Again, drop the first one in. Again, making sure I'm flush. And I am. I can take this out now. Add the other one. Then, taking this bit out, I want to change bits to a, uh, a Craig jig bit to a, um, a square drive. Well, maybe I am. All right. And take two of these Craig screws. Get those centered in there. Now the camera's in the way. Let me go over here. Put one in. That good and snug brings that down. There we go. And that is a solid arm. And now we'll do the other side. So there it is. That chair and the one over there in the corner, it's its brother, took about six hours to build both of these. And basically about $90. Again, using simple dimensional lumber. So good quality fasteners make all the difference. Now I'm finishing this, you can stain it, put some waterproof polyurethane or spar varnish, a marine varnish, or you could um, paint it with a good exterior grade paint. Choice is up to you. However, it's a wood product, and if it's outside, you're going to periodically, if it gets exposed to the rain, and depending on where you live, you got to refinish it from time to time. This isn't waterproof forever. No piece of wood is, even treated lumber. Um, and again, this is a simple project. You can build this either with a shop full of tools or with a circular saw and a jigsaw. So, a simple project. Hope you enjoyed watching it. And um, we're probably going to take these and probably stain them, a little bit of a tint to it, put some marine varnish on it, and put them out in the backyard and enjoy our, our hot summer here in South Texas. Again, thanks for watching, and like and subscribe. Y'all have a fine night. Thank you.